Hello everybody, this is Dan Alexander with Artist Grapevine. Today we're going to do a charcoal demo of the black hooded chickadee. Um, I always like to experiment with birds. Birds are a really favorite subject of mine. Right now we're going to go through the grocery list of some of the materials that you're going to need if you ever want to try one of these. Um, yeah, let's see here. I'm going to be having here some charcoal pencils, uh, General's Charcoal, the Extra Soft, um, and I also go with this one which is a uh, Rembrandt, it's a polycolor, um, and this one's just for like fine detail, it's more of a colored pencil, it's not really charcoal, but it's for like that fine, uh, nice hard edge that I want to get. Uh, charcoal tends to be kind of crumbly, and uh, to have a nice hard lead, or I guess you would say graphite, or in this case it would be colored pencil, um, really helps when you really want to get some of that fine detail. And we're also going to be using a white pastel Conte, uh, I'll take it out of the package here, chalk pencil. That's being a little difficult. So we're going to use this as well. And this is also made by Generals. Uh, we're going to have our blending stumps here, a uh, big one, some smaller ones uh, for the finer, tighter corners. Um, our trusty electric eraser. And they're a lot of fun to use. And a little bit of photo reference here. So I've already started um, sketching out my composition here so as you can see here it's a little bit of a sheen there from the light but yeah I went ahead and just loosely sketched out the bird so without further ado we're gonna get started and I'm gonna do a time-lapse video like in some of the videos before and I'm gonna narrate over the top so uh, let's get started Okay, so we're going to start out here with this Canson paper. Um, the Canson paper is a toned paper, so that paper really kind of helps bring out the mid-tones. Um, it's uh, very similar to the previous video I did with the rooster. Um, so we're going to go ahead and we're going to start laying down some black here um, for, the, uh, for the hood. Now the thing is, was when you're when you're doing these charcoals, I always try to tell people um, who want to try doing uh, charcoals who've never tried it is um, slower is faster. Um, you can't really see this right now in um, in our time lapse video, but if you if you approach this uh, in a slow, patient manner, you'll make less mistakes, and you'll actually get your piece done quicker. Uh, you won't have to go back in and do revisions or have to, you know, fix things. So um, I always just kind of uh, impress upon people to take their time and to just enjoy the process. Don't really rush it. Um, and before you know it, you're gonna be you're gonna be through the piece, and it's gonna look a lot better than if you tried to rush and and try to hurry it. Um, I've gotten really discouraged in the past before I was um, before I had gotten some experience using charcoal and it's really easy to rush something and and then kind of screw it up because you, you get to that point where you want to get the piece done but ultimately the um, the fun is just you know the process of it so right here we're uh, going ahead and we're, we're doing some branch work here I'm, I always lay down the shadows on the bottom of the branch and then highlights on the top so this point where we're going back in and we're, we're touching up some of the white of the plumage on the bird now as you can see I kinda work from I try to work from uh, top left to bottom right corner I started working on the bird but then I realized I tried to 
work on that branch my hand might get in there and smudge some of the bird and some of the work that I've already done so I went ahead and got myself an envelope an envelope's a really handy thing to have because then you can kind of rest your hand on it you don't have to worry about any smudges getting on your 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 substrate and ruining your piece before it's even finished I find that having a sheet of paper that you can rest your hand on and uses um, you know kind of like a barrier really comes in handy you should always have something like that be it a piece of paper um, a, a tool which is known as a bridge sometimes you can find those at uh, at art stores and it's just something you can rest your hand on you can even make one in your in your spare time you could make one I've seen people make them out of wood So here we're getting ready to uh, move underneath the beak here. We're, we're going to put some dark charcoal down um, and uh, we're going to get a little bit closer to the breast of the bird. Always have a great time doing these. They're, um, it's a good time to just kind of reflect and you know the, the work is there. It's cut out for you if you just kind of let it happen. And uh, sometimes my brain just shuts off, and then I can just kind of, uh, it's almost meditative. You know, it's, it's, it's very therapeutic to just sit here and just, you know, draw something, have a little bit of photo reference right there. You know, and another thing, too, is you don't have to stick to the photo reference. You can kind of uh, stray from it. It doesn't have to be exact. Some people get really caught up and looking at their photo reference and trying to replicate it right down to the very last detail and it's just not necessary in fact I, uh, I'd highly discourage it, it's just there as a guide that's just like another tool you kinda want some of your own character to kinda shine through on the piece so uh, being a slave to the reference kinda kinda hinders that We're darkening up the the hood here a little bit more. We're going to start putting in a little bit more contrast. Now these blending stones are just a lot of fun, um, and you know if you take your time using the pencil, um, what really speeds things up is using the blending stump. Um, you can really get in there and cover a little bit more area. It's very handy. I like having them. They kind of smooth everything out so you don't have that kind of like that pencil rendered look. Um, it's uh, it's just nice. It just helps grind some of that charcoal and some of that white Conte into the paper. It gives you some really good gradations um, and some great tones. We're here in the tail feather. Um, part of the bird here and as you can see I've done anything to the right side of the image yet um, because we're trying to get everything done from the bottom left down to now to the center of the piece and then once we get all that rendered we can um, we can go back in and, and start working on the bottom right of the branch And here I'm using an eraser for some subtractive, um, some tra subtractive techniques. Um, sometimes um, pulling off the charcoal and pulling off, off some of the white uh, is almost as, as important as putting it down on the paper. It's almost like you're drawing in reverse with the eraser. Now we're getting closer here to. Uh, rendering the feet um, and as you can see I just kind of put uh, an idea of where I wanted the feet and I'm starting to move down um, to render the uh, the trunk of the tree that this uh, this branch sits on
Yeah, when I first started doing these, doing the branches and just the background elements, um, really was kind of tedious, and I've kind of learned to embrace that and just. Uh, it's all part of the piece. It's all going to help the piece um, in the end. So, you know, you might as well just sit back and enjoy it. I know a lot of people are just, uh, they want to get to that bird. They want to get to the, the, the main focus of the piece. But uh, you kind of want to just, like I said, just kind of take a breath and, and uh, have some patience and in the end, it's it's the payoff is is going to be worth it. And as you can see now, the the, the tree limb and the, the branch, it's all starting to kind of come together a little bit. Yeah, there I am again with the eraser. Um, yeah, kind of add some highlights and might have gone a little bit too heavy with the charcoal, but. That's the great thing about charcoal. It lifts off the paper uh, pretty easily. And I think if you guys try this out, um, this technique, I think you're really going to like it. And, you know, give it a few attempts. Um, you might not like your first one, but if you keep uh, you keep at it, you'll start to you'll start to see, you know, how much fun these can be. They're very enjoyable. And uh, there's no reason why you couldn't do, um, you know, a chickadee or a nuthatch or uh, any type of bird in easily in an uh, probably an afternoon. We're getting very close here to the end. I'm going to add a few design elements uh, and after I've uh, put in a few highlights here with the white pencil. blending stick there I thought well you know let's put a little bit of uh, snow in the in the background here I thought well maybe that would be it's not really in the photo reference but I'm thinking well you know we're getting close to the new year and I thought why not just uh, put some Drifting snowflakes in the background adds a little bit of sense of depth too. Gives it a very uh, cinematic, atmospheric kind of mood. Hope you enjoyed the video. Be sure to like and subscribe, and uh, happy New Year.